Good uh, morning. I'd like to call this uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, meeting of the Board of Supervisors to order and thank our uh, two of our uh, fine representatives up here for putting on a bit of the green for us. Right? Um, and uh, Roberta, would you do the roll call, please? You have to use an Irish brogue for it. Then. Supervisor Long? Here. Supervisor Zaragoza? Here. Supervisor Parks? Here. Supervisor Foy? Here. And Supervisor Bennett? Present. Um, and if we'll stand for Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> Hand over heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, uh, Ms. Long and Ms. Robinson, what were the maiden names? Uh, oh, Matt. My mother's, my, my mother's name is Kathleen Marguerite O'Malley. Is that Italian? Yeah. Right, yeah. This is and, <laughs> and Supervisor Law? Um, Betty Jean Morrison Marshall. Irish, Irish article, Irish. Uh huh. <laughs> so, very appropriate, right? I have that good emphasis on that. Uh, all right, we're at uh, minutes of. Uh, October 7th and October 28th. We need a second. I'll second it. So move us along and we're ready to vote on the minutes. And the minutes have been approved. Um, and now we are at agenda review. Miss uh, Kathleen O'Malley. <laughs> <laughs> um, item number 17 is removed from the agenda. And on item number 24, materials were received from the City of Thousand Oaks and Jer, Jer Robins. I believe also the fire chief uh, provided your board with reports on that item also. Thank you. Okay. So we're pulling item 17. That's our 1030 time certain. Uh, anything else for the other board members? All right, we need a motion for the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. We're ready to vote, please. And the agenda has been approved. We're at consent items 9 through 14. Been moved and seconded. Please vote. <coughs> and consent the calendar is approved. We're now at public comments. Do we have any public comment cards, Roberta? You say no? Yes, oh, oh, there we go. Great. Mr. Carol Dean Williams. Thank you and good morning. Uh, a moment of affirmation here. Uh, even a 10 foot rat has free speech rights in New Jersey. The state Supreme Court ruled Thursday. Even a 10 foot rat. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to give a moment of affirmation that our county council, he's a rat, but I don't know if he's 10 foot tall or not. So he has free speech rights. He has free speech rights, but he's trying to squash mine. But the sheriff, here's the incident report from the sheriff naming Clay Bomb as the one violating
time's up. Our next uh, item is for us to go to policy matter 23, Supervisor Long. Oh, all right. <laughs> we'll reluctantly do that, but you have to speak in an Irish brogue, right? All right, as we go forward. Supervisor Foy, you want to start us off with board comments today? Sure. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd like to adjourn the memory of the people on this list. And then also a couple comments. Uh, one is that, again, for the second year in a row, Moore Park High will be representing California in the U.S. Academic Catholic in Memphis, Tennessee. And I want to say congratulations to them for their second straight win in capturing that. It was uh, a little close to find out if they were going to win this. But, uh, again, I just go back to the idea that I think kids are kids, and these are great kids, but this goes great, great leadership with teachers in the school. So that's some good stuff. Um, I think that's about all I got. Okay. Try to keep Thank you. Quick. Supervisor Parks. Thank you. Um, I would ask that the board adjourn in memory of Nancy Cole, who uh, was a volunteer at our Agura shelter. Um, also wanted to uh, let the public know that I'm having a, um, a dinner event featuring Senator Fran Pavley discussing a green economy and um, meeting our greenhouse gas emissions. So that's on March 26th, and you can call my office if you'd like to attend, and I think that would be very informative for the public. Um, and I think that concludes my, my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Long. I wish I had an Irish brogue, but I don't. Okay. Good morning. A um, couple of things to, to tell you about this morning. Um, one, uh, most of you know that uh, I, I took a trip last uh, a week, a couple of days, to D.C. with the Transportation Commission to put forward both our top transit needs and our, and our um, uh, top, uh, uh, from the Transportation Commission, our transit needs and our uh, improvement or highway priority for the 101-23 improvement. Um, we had a uh, packed uh, two days of meetings and, and um, good reception. It's one of those things, you know, you know there's no promises made. It's all looking at uh, either dollars coming through reauthorization of transportation dollars or through the economic stimulus, and there's still a lot of unknown on that. But uh, I think there were a couple things to say that we were there early, and uh, early in the sense of, I think, getting our our wish list on the table first. Um, we had good materials that were left behind with folks, and and uh, as always, we were received well by our congressional representatives, and they spent a um, uh, good time with us, and it was it was worth the investment to take the trip back. Um, I'd like to uh, make note uh, of our Ventura County Public Health Emergency Preparedness Office was recently evaluated for its ability to dispense medical supplies during a large-scale public health emergency, and they scored 97 out of the possible 100, and were recognized for that, um, glowing remarks for their preparedness, which means glowing remarks for our county and, and being prepared, and, and just uh, congratulations to the public health um, Emergency Preparedness Office and keep up the good work. And to let the public know that on um, Sunday, March 22nd, there's going to be a community workshop at the South Oxnard Community Center, and uh, it will be focused on how do we improve public access, enjoyment, and understanding of the Ormond Beach wetlands. Uh, it'll be a, a real opportunity. This is being um, uh, a wonderful um, partnership through the Coastal Conservancy with um, uh, uh, students from Cal Poly, and the Cal Poly team um, have, a, have, in essence, been assigned the Ormond Beach project as one to uh, work on and provide the, the public uh, um, um, interaction opportunity to hear from the public on what they would like to see for the uh, wetlands and, and both in the educational and access opportunities. So that's from 2 to 5 on Sunday, March 22nd. And if anyone wants further information, any other contact my office or, or the um, through the Ormond Beach uh, Task Force. Um, and then I'd like to have I have a list here to adjourn in memory of folks from my district and to uh, call out uh, particularly one, and that's Eleanor Crouch. Um, Eleanor 
passed away, and she was um, a community volunteer for everything in Santa Paula, very active in Sunday school, scout leader. She served on the City Parks and Rec Committee in 1969 and 72, joined the Planning Commission. She was elected to the City Council in 1974, the first woman mayor of Santa Paula from 77 to 78 and continued to stay active, served on regional boards when in her elected position um, in South Coast Area Transit, uh, Cal the Association of Governments and the Her Cultural Heritage Board. Um, a, a remarkable woman in her time and um, served Santa Paula well, well and, and very much loved by the community and, and will be missed. So put that forward. And um, so my Irish blessing for you. Wherever you go and whatever you do, may the luck of the Irish be there with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Supervisor McZaragoza. <laughs> Mr. Zaragoza, <coughs> my Irish name is Zaragoza. <laughs> Last week, you know, we made a presentation to the Channel Islands Beach Community Service uh, District. Stan Hakes and I, my CBIT staff, went with me and uh, we spoke to the public, made a, a brief presentation, answered questions. Uh, with some of the concerns, and we also heard a presentation from the new uh, expanded enhanced location for the Maritime Museum, and that was a very, very productive and informative meeting that we had there. Also, there was a Helico meeting uh, last week, and I know this is Supervisor Long's uh, district, but many of our constituents had questions and concerns, and also, again, uh, uh, my staff member Bill Gallagher and uh, Lauren Bianchi from Supervisor Long's uh, staff were there, and they the EPA provided an update, U.S. EPA from an update, update, and answered questions regarding the slag pile there at the um, Helico site, and an assessment is underway on what they're going to do there. And after the assessment is completed, a plan will be put together to clean up the area, and how the funding is going to uh, come together to to clean that uh, that whole Superfund uh, fund site. We also had another meeting at the El Rio School District Summit, is what they called it. In the morning, we attended a forum about development assets and how it is important that the school and also the life of a, of a child and how we can get, uh, actually produce a successful child. And basically, what are parents doing correctly to produce a, a young man or young lady that is successful in school life and how we can repeat that model was, was the theme there. In the afternoon, we also stand, uh, attended a, what they call an ambassador forum to speak on behalf of the El Rio School District and the lessons I would learn in the morning. Also, this uh, tomorrow, you know, I got invited to the CNN local edition. It will be taped a uh, five and seven minute interview uh, on what's happening in the county, so, on the local CNN uh, edition. Also, I, I was invited to speak to the South Oxnard revitalization meeting tomorrow evening. And also, uh, this last Saturday, uh, Lourdes Solorizano, uh, my executive um, aide, also spoke at the uh, Boys and Girls Club, and the event match was called Match Up Children with Mentors, and, uh, and how we can get resources to help our, our boys and girls at the Boys and Girls Club, and also to make it a safe place for children and families to meet. So that's my report. And also I have this, my list of constituents here. Thank you very much. Uh, Supervisor Park, you have one more comment. Yeah, I, I uh, wanted to um, congratulate Larry Matheny's office. I know that they uh, implemented a new strategy to try to keep people from um, losing their homes from, from tax default. And I just really wanted to compliment that it, uh, it was designed, the new strategy was designed to keep homeowners who are behind in their taxes and their residences rather than selling the properties and putting these people on the streets. and. Uh, it's not something he was required to do, but uh, was able to do within the law and was able to keep a lot of people in their homes that otherwise would not be. So thanks to him and Great. his staff and Jennifer Smith. Great. Thank you. Um, a few things that uh, I'd like to uh, mention. I'd like to ask the board to adjourn in memory of the people on this list, and I'm very sorry to hear about Dora Crouch's uh, passing. Of in her Eleanor Crouch. Oh, Eleanor Crouch. Eleanor. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear about. Sorry to hear about Eleanor too. Uh, but um, okay. Uh, and ask the board to adjourn in memory of um, the people on this list here, um, and uh, the um, 
also point out that we have uh, our homeless one-stop uh, shelter here, uh, or service here in Ventura County. Uh, every Tuesday, about 50 or 60 people show up at it. Uh, and um, what we're seeing now is many of these people are new homeless people. We're seeing more families coming in with children um, and uh, people who've never dealt with this situation before, et cetera. And there is a growing need there, and for any of our employees that are listening to this uh, broadcast and stuff, there's a growing no need uh, for personal hygiene items, socks, those kinds of items at the One Stop. And the One Stop is at 3147 Loma Vista Road, room 14, if you wanted to drop anything off. Or you could bring them up to the Board of Supervisors office up on the fourth floor and uh, you could drop them off at our office and we'd be happy to get those over also. So anyway, we need socks, personal hygiene items. Also, um, we have foster parents. Uh, we're out there um, beating the bushes trying to recruit people to become foster parents. And foster parents, with all of the economic issues going on, foster parents are struggling with diaper costs. And if people can donate um, uh, diapers, um, we, they could be they would be used very well. Um, and uh, same thing, you can drop them off at my office uh, up on the fourth floor. Uh, but that's foster parents, um, and you know some foster parents suddenly have the extra financial burden of uh, all of those costs associated with uh, uh, taking in uh, our children in that situation. Um, and uh, with that, um, that ends my board comments, I believe. Oh, no, one other item. Thank you. Um, and that is, um, it's a very interesting article. Um, I hope everybody had a chance to read it about um, the, the oncology center that the, that the county uh, has and how it's, it is truly um, the safety net of last resort for citizens and if just all of you imagine you're in the middle of your chemo treatments you lose your job you lose your insurance um, and so literally your life is in the balance um, it reminded me of sort of the solemn responsibility that we have here to keep this system patched together because the bottom line is when somebody presents and says I've got to have a four thousand dollar chemo treatment and uh, we shouldn't have the option of saying, well, sorry, we just can't handle that. Um, and they've done a remarkable job of keeping that system put together uh, uh, well, uh, and it's just a fine example of that safety net. So with that, um, we're done with our board comments, and we're ready to go and uh, get our last two items done. And now, Supervisor Long, item 23. Yes, thank you. Um, and this is to fill an appointment on the Community Commission for Ventura County. Um, we've always had an opening for our um, public safety on that uh, commission, and they uh, lend valuable expertise and input to the um, populations and uh, integrated services um, that the commission focuses on. And the request is for Dennis Carpenter, uh, as requested by the sheriff, to serve as uh, his representative to that commission, and that's my motion. I'll second that motion. We're ready to vote. And that motion passes unanimously. We're at item 24, Supervisor Parks. Thank you. Um, there, I know we've got some more stuff being passed out. Uh, there was a uh, city council meeting last Tuesday, and the uh, city council spent probably an hour uh, concerned with the fact that a consultant study that they commissioned showed that the city is a donor city. They pay more in property tax uh, than they receive in services from the fire district. Um, that's what their consultant study showed. Uh, our fire department has disagreed with the conclusions of that report, and so um, I would ask that we get to the bottom line and hear from our fire district and uh, asking that the board come back uh, or that the fire district comes back in August and looks at um, what that disparity is. Uh, and then in addition to that, talk, uh, give us some information about the regional benefits of, of fire service. So that's what I'm requesting. I, I think you might have some speaker cards. So before I 
make a motion. I'd be happy to hear from Jerry Robins or whoever else who would like to speak. I also note we have a, uh, just received a, an email correspondence from Elizabeth Grossman out in um, Hidden Valley for, to add to your packet of information. Okay, and our first speaker is uh, Candace Honey. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Candace Hong. I'm the assistant city manager at the city of Thousand Oaks, and I wanted to thank you for having me here today. Uh, the reason I'm here is that the council members, uh, as the super, um, as Linda mentioned, had voted on Tuesday night about um, letting the board know how important it is to them to have a fire station in city, the city of Thousand Oaks. And they would have liked to have been here, but they're all at the um, National League of Cities in Washington, D.C. So I would like to read to you the, the letter from the mayor to the board. On March 10th, Thousand Oaks City Council unanimously voted to submit the second formal request to the Ventura County Protection District Board of Directors to hold a public meeting to openly discuss the process of locating a full service fire station within the Westlake portion of the City of Thousand Oaks. By way of background, attached is a full copy of the city's March 10th staff report on this matter entitled Fire Services Operational and Financial Review. This document includes a copy of the city's first formal request for a Westlake fire station on October 16, 2008, and the original independent fire services operational financial study from October 9, 2007. The need to locate a full service fire station in Westlake was initially proposed to the city several years ago by the county fire chief, Bob Roper, and subsequently reaffirmed by the highly respected and knowledgeable jointly selected independent consulting team, Ralph Anderson and Associates. This comprehensive study was based largely on an operational and financial information provided by the fire district and county staff. The consultants ultimately concluded that the proposed new location for this fire station is essential to ensure the public safety, health, and well-being for the residents and businesses located within the more heavily populated Westlake area. Despite the positive interaction among staff from the fire district and the city and progress on several of the other consultant recommendations over the past year and a half, unfortunately the Westlake Fire Station matter remains unresolved. This frustration was discussed at the March 10th City Council meeting and is more fully articulated in the outside consultant's letter March 3rd which is attached to the staff report. As a result of all the past studies, meetings, and analysis, Thousand Oaks City Council is once again officially requesting that the Fire District Board support the long-standing desire of your Fire Chief and recommendation of the independent outside consultants to begin the process to locate a full-service fire station within Westlake as soon as possible. This process should begin with holding a public meeting to further discuss the merits of this request. Ideally, a final decision should be made in time for the project to commence with the beginning of the upcoming fiscal year. At the March 10th City Council meeting, the Mayor was also directed to provide the Fire District Board of Directors with the attached copy of the 1993 Ventura County Auditor Controller's Audit of the Fire Protection District. In addition, City Council directed the City Internal Auditor to work with Fire District staff and the outside consultants to perform an updated analysis of the, fire, of the financial information contained in the October 2007 study. Part of this review will include an analysis of the methodology used to determine recurring annual fire district revenues generated from within the City of Thousand Oaks from all sources and not just property taxes, as well as recurring annual expenditures within the City of Thousand Oaks. On March 11th, the City staff and outside consultants began this review process. Fire district staff has committed to fully cooperate in this analysis just as they did in the previous review. It is anticipated this review will be completed shortly and will be submitted to the City Council as part of the Fire Services Operational and Financial Update Report by September 30th. On behalf of Thousand Oaks Westlake area residents and businesses who expect and deserve the highest level of fire protection services possible, thank you for making their public safety, health, and well-being a top priority. All of us owe it to the Westlake community to resolve this important public policy matter as quickly as possible. We wouldn't. We would like to have had the um, consultant here tonight, but he, or this morning, but he's not available. He's out of town. So, anyway, thank you for your consideration of this matter. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker, Mr. Jerry Robins. Sorry. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Bennett, members of the board. 
Mr. Zaragoza, it's nice to see you. I'm Jerry Rubbings from Thousand Oaks. Uh, I don't know if you can hear Ms. Hong's comments, but I was sitting two rows back and uh, could hardly hear a word that was spoken, so I don't know if the sound system doesn't work or not. Uh, two weeks ago, I was purging a lot of my files, uh, records, and file cabinets, and I came across the uh, audit of the fire district that was done in 1993. I read this and I, I was struck by the fact that here we are 16 years later and there's never been a follow-up audit. Uh, what would the numbers look like today on those issues that they looked at uh, compared to 1993? Uh, the audit in 93 called for a st strategic plan to be developed by the district. I don't know if that was ever done. Uh, has the staffing ratios changed between management and uh, field personnel? Have they controlled the, the use of uh, overtime? That was one of the big issues back in 1993. Also, the use of uh, workers' compensation. Uh, in this audit in 93, they found that in this fire district, there were 62 cases of workers' compensation filed for injuries received during their physical fitness training. Really seemed to be uh, a little unusual at that time. I don't know if that's been changed. And I, I wonder uh, if they've established a uh, operational plan for the objective uh, evaluation for siting of fire stations. That, that should be an operational plan, not, not a uh, political uh, decision. Um, we're now faced with this issue with the city of Thousand Oaks and uh, a dispute over the revenues received and the services received. This would certainly seem to be an appropriate time for another audit. Over the years that I've been coming here, and this is now my 20th year coming to speak before your board and looking over your shoulder, uh, I, I know, it's been a long time, but uh, over those years, myself and others have stood here and asked this board to fund audits of different departments in the county. And, and that's your safety net. Without audits, you don't know what's happening. And uh, we have a auditor controller who doesn't have the, the budget or the funds for uh, audits. Uh, to my mind, to, to tell the auditor that there's no funds for audits would be akin to telling the sheriff department that there's no money for patrol cars. Uh, audits are a necessary function of this county. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rovins. Okay, we're done with the comments. Back to Supervisor Parks. Yeah, I, I, I want to, um, I appreciate the letter from the mayor of Thousand Oaks because it's the first I've seen where uh, they've requested service without saying close down the Lake Sherwood Fire Station and don't provide service to Lake Sherwood and uh, Hidden Valley to the extent we have now. I sure don't want to leave an area underserved. Public safety is our first priority here. Um, and I respect the desire of the city to increase service wherever possible. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing back from the fire department and um, that will be my motion to request that the fire department do, does bring back uh, in August a report back on the discrepancies in funding that the city commissioned report indicates. Uh, and what the fire department um, believes is the case. Uh, I had heard at the council meeting that it's m closer to one and a half million, not six million, whatever the numbers are. It would be nice to know what the numbers are, as um, Jerry Robins indicated. It would be good to have that. I know, uh, speaking with the fire chief, there have been a lot, a lot of smaller audits done, and I know we do have a, a strategic plan out there. But having that information available for the public, I think, will be informative and helpful and so um, what I, I would move is that we do hear uh, get a report back from our Ventura County Fire District on the levels of service out there in uh, the Westlake area in Thousand Oaks as well as the revenue that the city contributes. Um, I think that that will help incredibly with the um, frustration that the city has on this. Um, Thousand Oaks is in very good stead even in these economic times, as I had mentioned at our last board meeting, they were able to donate uh, a loan $6 million to Caltrans 
You know, you don't you don't generally get those kind of opportunities that give them state money. <laughs> Usually, it's the state taking our money, but um, to voluntarily contribute that so that they can get going on the widening of the 23 and 101. But I I I know that they have um, a good revenue base out there in their taxes. Um, it's the highest income area in the county. Uh, and so um, they would naturally be a, a donor city if the percentage of property taxes distributed evenly through all the different cities that goes to the fire district. So uh, it stands to reason that would be the case um, if they can get uh, better services out there for the money that they contribute. I think it's worth looking at. So um, with that, I, I would ask for that report back and have it back in August. That'll be my motion. Okay. There's a motion on that. Is there a second? I'm, I'm sharing at this point, waiting. Okay, so there's a second. Um, any further comment on it? I, I'd just like to comment um, that I, I appreciate the City of Thousand Oaks bringing this forward and that we, um, as citizens, when we sit with that hat on as a fire protection district, that um, we should have uh, uh, at all times, the priority for the citizens to feel like the services they are provided are, um, are, are providing them the level of safety they deserve. And uh, the fire district, I think, has been uh, very um, uh, stellar in both its performance and, and but there is a strategic plan, as you mentioned, Supervisor. So I think that uh, it's just perhaps a matter of having that public discussion and, and making sure the communications are solid and it'll be... Um, I, I welcome the opportunity for us to have a good review on this and bring it forward. <coughs> so there's been a motion and a second. Any objection to that motion? Or any further comments? Yeah. Or any? I, I would also just note that um, the fire district also indicated at the meeting there is no service vacuum in the Westlake area. It's been that situation. We've had that same population for, you know, at least 15, 20 years now. So it, it hasn't changed in terms of the population and the service that's been out there. But if we can do better, we should. Well, I think that's very important that the citizens know that mm -hmm. and appreciate that. And, um, and as to the comments made by Mr. Robings to certainly um, uh, answer those comments and provide uh, the information that's available. And again, for the district board to have a full discussion when this all comes back. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, time to vote. And that motion passes, and we're ready for motion on the, co the correspondence agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. We're ready to vote. And that motion passes, and uh, we are going into closed session. Um, uh, and uh, we have two 10 o'clock uh, time certain items. Um, will we have any announcements coming out of closed session? There may be an announcement. Okay. All righty. We will be back for 10 o'clock from our closed session. Um, we do have an announcement out from closed session. Uh, County Council, would you please make the announcement? Yes, thank you. Regarding number 19 on the agenda, NRA Cable and Wireless USA, Inc. et al., the Board of Supervisors has voted 5-0 to zero to accept the bankruptcy trustee's offer of $22,098.24 to settle the county's claim for unpaid taxes. Thank you. And thank you. Okay, then our next uh, item up is item 15, our 10 o'clock item. It's a second hearing, amendment to the memorandum of agreement between the county and the International Union of Operating Engineers. Mr. Nicole, good morning. Madam Chairman, members of the board, Mrs. Robinson, what you have is the second hearing for the second amendment to the memorandum of agreement between the county of Ventura and the operating engineers. 
This provides for an HVAC differential for the person who services our GSA buildings. Okay, any questions? Support the recommendation. There's a motion and a second. Okay, let's vote. I don't know if I'm voting as who I'm voting as here, but I'll vote. <laughs> this member is marked as absent, so do I have to go down there and vote? Okay, thank you. <laughs> motion and a second and uh, Supervisor Bennett is absent so we have four votes in favor and thank you Mr. Nicole. Thanks very As much. As always good work. Okay thank you. Um, our next item up is mine and I uh, appreciate that uh, we have this on our agenda today. As, I, as you can see from the board letter I've asked that we have a presentation from the Economic Development Collaborative of Ventura County of which we as a board have in the County of Ventura have been a member of this collaborative since its formation and I see it as our um, both a regional uh, public-private partnership but as our economic arm for the County of Ventura um, and, and that the work that is done uh, by the collaborative certainly uh, strengthens all of us as, as the tide rises and the boats rise we, we all benefit and um, but in these economic tough times, I thought it would be important for all of the board and the public to hear some of the good work that's undertaken by the Economic Development Collaborative. So I've invited um, uh, Bruce Tensley, who's the uh, uh, economic, da, 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 da. Bruce, who is here, Stensley, um, who is our uh, CEO and president of the EDCVC, and um, Ed Summers is with us, who is the board uh, chair for this year and uh, also on the, on the um, private side of the roster is uh, uh, with Affinity Bank and one of their strong, uh, what are you, VP? President. Something in the middle. Ed Summers in the middle. <laughs> Ed Summers, I'm sorry. And then um, and we also have Gary Wartick who's a board member and he's the economic development manager for the City of Thousand Oaks. And um, so I just, I'm going to turn it over to them and have, have them give us a presentation on the good work of the EDCVC and appreciate that you are here this morning. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Supervisor Long and members of the board. Um, congratulations. I've said it many times privately, but to uh, our new county administrative officer, although not quite as new anymore. It's been a year so already. So congratulations. Well, it, it really has flown by, but yeah. it is a pleasure to be here and to talk about the Economic Development Collaborative for Ventura County. Some of us, uh, I was there, I know Supervisor Long, um, Marty were there at the beginning and looking at how we could facilitate the development of an economic development, and the name was appropriate, collaborative, that involved the private sector and the public sector at looking at key issues and problems to enhance the economic prosperity in our county. And the organization has been very successful over the years in maximizing this collaboration and partnership and the county has been a very important role. It's been important through its support, certainly financially with our programs, but the resources we've received through the county administrative office in Del Compkins, the supervisor's participation, Supervisor Long, I know Supervisor Foy has been a member. We, we're very happy to have Supervisor Zaragoza now with us. So it's, it's a collaboration that brings 10 cities and businesses together. In 2008, we were able to help 200 small businesses in the County of Ventura, which led to the retention of over 140 jobs. We worked closely with the county and other members of the organization in securing $2 million, which was previously in a disaster fund, to become small business enhancement loans. Through this partnership, we have worked with cities including Simi Valley, Thousand Oaks, and upcoming in Ventura, for small business enhancement programs, letting these businesses know in today's tough economic times what resources are available to them. We have created a half a million dollars in new loans for diversity and economic development, and we're working with cities such as the city of Ventura, which I'm very proud to represent, in the business incubator and small business development centers. So without the support of our cities, our businesses, and the county, these efforts wouldn't be possible, so we're very thankful. Our president is going to provide you with an overview of the organization and a little bit more about us. Thank you, Mr. Summers, and good morning, Mr. Stensley. Good morning. Thanks for having us here, members of the board. Uh, Ms. Robinson, 
Okay, so I got to figure out how this thing works. I just press the button I present. It should. There and there go. we are, public and private partnership. I couldn't resist the opportunity. Since I don't do don't humor, worry. I thought an image would, would help. Um, if these guys could talk, public and private enterprise can talk, certainly in Ventura <laughs> County. Um, as Ed mentioned, we are, of course, a public-private partnership, and we really appreciate the county support and, and of all the private sector members. As you know, incorporated in 96. We're funded just very briefly in looking at that, of course, dues by private sector, dues from the county, program contributions from each of the cities, and then various contracts. The county's Workforce Investment Board supports some programming that we'll talk about in a moment, and of course, the Department of Commerce primarily for our revolving loan funds. Our purpose, of course, is we are dedicated to being a business service organization, but in the end, our core goal is regional uh, quality of life. We are not just blindly dedicated to figuring out where is the bottom line for business, but looking for the partnership that really creates opportunities for workers, for business vitality and growth, and again, quality of life. Um, there we go. There's Elvis again. Um, it went the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about three things very briefly and leave one of them to for uh, Gary to address in more detail. I'll give you some background or a little bit more de detail on our business enhancement program, on our loan programs, and what we call our Economic Developers Roundtable, which is, is a gathering of the economic development professionals in the county on a monthly basis. Um, but first, and let me reference some of the material. We've bombarded you with a handful of paper up here. Um, in several pages into this, first is uh, a summary of our business enhancement program, then of our loan program, um, a program with the city of Ventura, and then one titled Our Dedication to Small Business Services, which I'd like to hit just a little bit. While not exclusively dedicated to small business, this is a, this is a huge issue that we're really trying to get our arms around, and that is about 95% of the businesses in Ventura County have 50 employers or less. Over three quarters of them have 10 workers or less. Over, or just about half of the private sector payrolls in Ventura County go to employers with 50 employers or less. And about 75% of the job growth nationally and in Ventura County in any given period is through these small business enterprises. The issue, though, that, to which we are dedicated is the extraordinary volatility that occurs in small business enterprises. They grow. They expand, they shrink, they get destroyed in, in the hard economy, and there aren't as many resources dedicated or available to small business owners to really navigate difficult times, and that's a niche that we serve or seek to fill, not only ourselves, by, but by building partnerships with others. And lastly on this, we really notice that the data is increasingly moving in the direction of where economic opportunity lies for women and minority-owned businesses, growing at a rate three to five times that of all other business owners, it is a real path to prosperity. We'll talk a little bit more about that also in a moment. Our business enhancement program really has two dimensions. One has to do with Business 911, marketed really as an emergency service to businesses facing trouble, and we do any number of things to help them. But we also work with businesses to help them stabilize, grow, and expand. It's not just an emergency program. Of course, it's confidential. It's one-on-one, -on -one, direct professional assistance. We maintain a core of consultants that are very good at this and we pair them very carefully with the needs of the business as we identify in, in initial discussions with them. The list of various kinds of services we provide is long, but they tend to be concentrated around two or three, maybe four issues, really looking at their business plans, their financial analysis and management, their marketing and communications, those kinds of things. This last year, as Ed mentioned, over 200 businesses served. Just to give you a sampling, though, briefly of some of the kinds of things that we are encountering, we've worked very closely this last year with the city of Fillmar in their Central Avenue, the, the main drag run through town where they've been doing a sewer project, lots of businesses having difficulty with people getting access, figuring out how they could respond to that, where they could identify different markets, some of them even moving toward an e-commerce model, working with a manufacturer in Ventura currently that is has a number of different products, but as the markets get weak on them, where should they be concentrating their efforts? So it's not just about surviving the economy, it's about sharpening the toolbox that they contain. We've been working with a number of restaurateurs lately, and one in particular in Camarillo I'm thinking of, that succession planning. As, the, as, as an older generation is passing it down to the younger generation, how do they organize the finances, how do they organize their corporate structure, the ownership, and how do they make sure they keep that business going? There are any number of cases like that. We're working with a 
lease broker currently who's got a ton of leases on behalf of some of the larger um, commercial buildings in the Oxnard plan, but of course signed that deal when leases were running high and now is stuck trying to figure navigating to keep people in buildings. What can we do to help negotiate some of those issues? We've also built the capacity to work in a couple of different ways just mentioned up here. Working with the city of Oxnard right now in an enterprise zone application. We've been providing financial analysis and assistance to the city of Santa Paula on how to access bond financing. We're working with California Business Transportation and Housing Agency on looking at what all of the local entities are doing to implement um, funding and program from the Federal Stimulus or Recovery Act. And we're now taking this on a roadshow, working with uh, in the city of Ventura later this month. We've got a program with a number of organizations, a half-day business forum. We're doing three workshops for businesses in the Ojai Valley over the next couple of weeks, a big forum for businesses in Camarillo. We've been to every chamber in the county, I think, recently, and we'll be doing that again. Um, the loan programs, there are three of them, and I'll try and get through this quickly and then give the podium to Gary in a moment. The three programs, two of them are funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce. One was a former earthquake program, the one Ed mentioned, which after years and years <laughs> of toiling by Marty and Dell in particular, have gotten the federal government to release that to general lending. We've got about a million, three, almost a million, four available for businesses. We've got an enormous demand for that fund right now. We expect to be making some loans very quickly. The other one was a former defense fund, now targeted to six different industries, primarily in the manufacturing side of things. We made a loan recently to a software firm in uh, Oxnard for $250,000, where they write for the Defense Department human resources management and tracking software. Couldn't get a loan from commercial credit, and we stepped in to help them out. Um, in another program with the city of Ventura that is dedicated to businesses downtown, the avenue, midtown, and commercial districts. You can see on the slides some of the key issues there, but I want to hit three of them, and a couple of them might sound counterintuitive. One, we do not make a loan to a business that has not received a rejection or a turn down letter from a bank. That's not because we're crazy and looking for risk, it's because we do not want to be competing with commercial credit, and intensely we're looking to partner with commercial credit to package our loan financing with banks as, as a partner to us, not exactly to provide loan guarantees for them, but going in in a partnership, giving both of us a little bit more stability and opportunity to invest in businesses. Our policy objective is to make loans that create jobs. So our standard is we want at least one new job created for every $25,000 we loan. And we're also very hard-nosed on the collateral side of this. We take personal guarantees, liens on homes, you name it, we're maybe looking at risks somewhat differently than banks, but we are moving in a direction that is um, very solidly collateralized. The portfolios, we've made over $7 million in loans over the last several years, $2.1 million for the city of Ventura alone. Just on the math alone on that, it's over 240 jobs created. And if you look at some of the larger success stories that we continue to track, we could have put a number up there about 400. We are now also working with cities to co-invest in the loan program, particularly the one that was the former earthquake fund. City of Oxnard has invested $75,000 toward that loan fund, and knock on wood, I believe Camarillo will be adding $55,000 in the next several weeks. Lastly on this, we've been finding a niche in that bottom point or bullet on this slide, whereas banks refer loan clients to us. We're seeing a lot of new and fairly young businesses in their growth trajectory for which there is some anxiety in this market, of course, for banks to make those loans. Traditionally, or if one can say that over the last five to ten years, they would go to venture and angel capital funds, which are also drying up. But there are also a number of these businesses looking at not losing the equity share that they own by giving up a lot of that to venture and angel. And so we're looking at making some deals. One that we've got that is very interesting right now is a former Amgen um, bioengineer makes a thing called bioreactors. It scares the daylights out of me. He's well <laughs> financed. He's got contracts to start doing some production and meeting those contracts, but needs some gap financing. Normally, those would go to lines of credit. Those are interesting sorts of deals coming to us these days. We're trying to see if we can respond to them. Gary will speak to the economic roundtable. And just a couple of last comments. We know that as Ventura County, and I don't say this with any negativity intended, that we recognize that as a coastal county in California that we are a high cost area, that we don't and can't really very well compete with places like Las Vegas and the Midwest 
for low-cost land and labor. We think that we've got rather high quality of life, high quality of labor in a place that people really want to be. Therefore, we're dedicating, and I think this is identified in a number of items. Um, our business plan is included in the materials that we handed out to you. The number one issue that think, we think makes Ventura County competitive is the education pipeline, the degree to which we have skilled competitive labor to respond to the needs of businesses as we move forward. We know that we need to energize entrepreneurship. If we can't be as successful as maybe Riverside and San Bernardino as attracting businesses from outside the state and county, we can build businesses from within and we need to build the resources and capacity to make this place conducive to entrepreneurship. We're also looking at a partnership with the Port of Wyneme and others, the universities, Cal Lutheran, and figuring out what we can do to help businesses access global markets, move new and old products on the global economy in ways that maybe they not have uh, looked at before. And lastly, accelerating business participation in the green economy. We know that there is a consumer demand for products and services out there, and we know that there is business creativity and innovation locally that we can help free up to make sure that they're accessing a share of that growing pie and finding quality um, investments, opportunity, and economic growth in Ventura County. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I want Gary to have a chance here to talk about the economic roundtable, which is really an extraordinary asset for the well, county. We do have a question first from our CEO. Yes. Bruce, could you, uh, I, I see on one of the points on your slide that's a loan program portfolios, it, something about establishing a community development financial institution? Yes. What, could you? It's a designation by the Department of Treasury, a CDFI is the acronym. You get designated based on your capacity as a community-based lender to make loans to businesses in a couple of different ways. Number one, to businesses that might be in distressed neighborhoods that have indicators of economic distress. Or it can be making loans, something that we're not interested in, to um, private markets such as um, mortgage guarantees and the like. Our interest is finding the designation in a way that we can um, work in, increase our capital to invest in private business. There's two ways we could do that. Number one, by getting the designation from the Department of Treasury, they could recapitalize some of our loan funds in a manner not unlike what the Department of Commerce does. But even more importantly, it makes us as an institution attractive to regional banks as a Community Reinvestment Act investment. Banks give us money and we make loans to businesses on their behalf. They meet their CRA obligations and maintain the portfolio in partnership with us to build business growth in Ventura County. Supervisor Zaragoza, you yeah, have a question? I, I got three questions. The question number one is uh, why we focus on small businesses. You say that we have uh, 20,000 businesses in Ventura County. That's a small number. Those are the ones that are reporting payroll employment oh. to the state's tax division. That's significant, you know, when you... Small businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's quite a few. And they are concentrated uh, mainly where or... On that page going down midway, if, if you can find I'm, I'm it in there, it, it's primarily concentrated. Um, I think there are 8,800 of them with 10 or fewer employees that are in the broadly mm -hmm. defined service sector. Um, but they're also strategically in there 1,600 construction firms, over 500 small manufacturing mm -hmm. firms with fewer than 500 employees, I mean mm -hmm. with fewer than 10 employees, wholesale trade, retail trade, and in finance, nearly 1,000 businesses with 10 or fewer employers okay. that are identified according mm -hmm. to the federal definition of industry classifications as financial institutions. And the other question I had, uh, this is minority and women owned businesses are opening at at a rate of three to five times. What type of businesses are they? Primarily, they're in the service sector, and they're in, in some cases, they're in, of course, retail trade, and, they, and I believe that a significant number of them are in the financial, um, financial market because they're providing solutions to mine, other minority-owned businesses that are looking for access to capital and intermediaries to do their relationships with banks and other institutions. That's good. And the other question I had in the enterprise zone for Oxnard, uh, the zone application, where is that going to be? Is that over at the harbor? Or? No, actually, the, the way it works or is over in the, well, the, the eligibility for the designation is primarily on distress indicators of poverty and unemployment. So it mm -hmm. is sent in by census tract. So mm -hmm. it's essentially just east of downtown and south all the way down the Channel Islands um, Boulevard. Right. 
Third Street and down the industrial area there. That's right. Okay. But what's extraordinary about the opportunity for from this program is that you also identify as part of the enterprise zone mm -hmm. census tracts that are either commercial or industrial designations. So the downtown core from the boulevard to C Street and pretty much the whole north-south corridor there and the enormous um, commercial industrial area on the northeast corner of the city from Rose to Del Norte from the freeway down to Fifth. Mm -hmm. So the businesses in those districts would get the benefit of a variety of tax incentives and up to $37,000 per worker hired in a tax credit. I was going to share that because that's a good incentive to hire uh, employees mm -hmm. you know, and stimulate the, uh, the economy. So the city is working feverishly on this, EDCO is working feverishly, and we're doing a couple of pieces on behalf of the city helping to develop the financial plan, the workforce development plan in partnership with the WIB, and the crazy thing called vouchering, which is mm -hmm. helping businesses document they are eligible for the tax benefits once they've made a hire. That's, that's good. That's a good program. Knock on wood. Ventura County has never had an enterprise zone designation. There are 40 of them statewide. It's fairly competitive, but hey, fair share, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't compete till you compete. Mr. Wartek. If I can figure this out. There we go. Did I go too One far? more. There you go. Yeah. Oh. The other way. There, there you go. go. There you are. I'm in the center there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Members of the board and uh, executive county executive officer, staff. Um, I'm Gary Wartick. I reside in Camarillo. I work for the city of Thousand Oaks. Um, one of the things that I, first of all, to re respond with respect to uh, Supervisor Zaragoza's question about small business. In Thousand Oaks, as an example, we have 4,000 business licensees. Uh, that's brick and mortar locations. In addition to that, we probably have another 4,000 small businesses that operate out of the home, home based mm -hmm. businesses. Of the 4,000 or 4,100 brick and mortar locations, we only have 40 that have more than 50 employees. So our job base in Thousand Oaks, as it is countywide, is basically small business. As uh, Bruce Densley mentioned, 50 or under, in fact, are a large component of, of businesses that have 10 employees or less. So that's where our focus is because that's where the need is and that's where the jobs are currently. And, and, and the president is saying that recovery is going to come from small businesses. Absolutely. So, so that's why we spend most of our effort on that. Mm -hmm. Our effort, basically, uh, from the economic roundtable, as the uh, outline on the screen indicates, we're really a collaborative within the collaborative. Uh, each of the cities uh, send, and the county CEO's office sends a representative to our monthly meetings. In addition to that, the, uh, we have one private sector board member and, uh, and the executive director uh, or president of the WIB, Workforce Investment Board, is also a member. So we have a lot of interaction. We're a very collegial group. Most of us have worked for our cities for at least 10 years. Uh, I've been on board nearly 11. It's hard to believe that Supervisor Parks has been a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, when Mrs. Park was on our city council. Um, we meet, we're the people who are in the trenches every day. We're dealing with the small business problems. The variety of phone calls we receive in City Hall from business people who are having problems is really, it's expanding, it's very significant, uh, it's pervasive. Additionally, we also, uh, so we talk about those things in our monthly meetings. What can we do to meet the needs of small business? Uh, we also talk about and cooperate with respect to efforts to attract businesses to the county, and that's not just any business, uh, but those kinds of companies that will bring good-paying jobs to the county because of our housing costs, notwithstanding the fact that they've fallen by 20 to 40 percent, they're still expensive in comparison to the rest of, the rest of Southern California. So we're, we spend a lot of time talking about what should we focus on, and the collaboration that we engage in is very is, is has changed in the last 10, 12 years since I've come along. Um, some of the cities used to what we call poach in other cities' backyards. They would take businesses, encourage them to relocate to other parts of the county. We've basically put a stop to that. We've, we suggested that a company is anywhere in Ventura County is good for the whole county. Uh, our city manager, Scott Mintick, is fond of saying a rising tide raises all boats. Well, I think we believe that. So that's why we work very, very collaboratively. Now, uh, Around the su end of the summer, in August or September, we, uh, we certainly be began to acknowledge that we were in a recession. So one of the, the dialogues that we had was, well, what are we going to do about it? So uh, Bruce Stensley mentioned earlier that uh, we had an outreach program. The outreach program was first held in October in the city of Simi Valley and sponsored by the city of Simi Valley. It was a success. The city uh, sent out about 30 
800 invitations. About 100 people uh, showed up. We replicated that program with some variations on that theme. Uh, just last month, on February the 17th, we had 108 attendees. Every one of our business licensees received an invitation. Uh, City of Ventura is going to be doing the same program week after next and in Camarillo on April the 9th. So if constituents are watching this as a tape and they have uh, questions about it, they can come from any of the cities to these programs that are being held in, in Ventura City Hall and the Camarillo City Hall in those states. Uh, we are providing very specific services, as Bruce has outlined, with respect to our business outreach program, our 911, and our loan program. So uh, in summary, we're here on a monthly basis uh, working as advisory to our board, uh, on which I sit, with respect to what are those programs, what are those issues, what are those policies that should be considered by the board and our local city councils and perhaps the board of supervisors to help have a sustainable economy, especially in this recessionary period. Mm -hmm. But thank you. Appreciate being here. And thank you. Are there any questions? Um, not, not a question, just a comment. Uh, okay. I was uh, at a conference over the weekend and um, Carl Gardino, who's the, um, I guess he was the head of the Silicon Valley Leadership Group, uh, is now uh, the chair of the California Transportation Commissioner, or at least a California Transportation Commissioner. And the, the, the Silicon Valley Leadership Group, I was just so impressed to hear about that and how much they got into the lead in um, both in support of uh, the Global Warming uh, Bill, AB 32, and really understanding the niche for green jobs, um, everywhere from trying to in, uh, educate people and train them for installing solar, for example, um, but really, really working at understanding and trying to move business to those areas where it's going to be uh, certainly uh, able to get funding, for example, from the stimulus bill, and, and just how much emphasis they have on that. And while, California, while you say um, Ventura County doesn't have the same kind of push as some of the major counties of large cities, we are one of those coastal cities that are um, uh, looking at getting inundated when you do, uh, when, if the climate does change and we end up having, you know, several feet of water and flooding problems. And that's, we're talking about our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. So the whole idea about what we need to do um, uh, in terms of trying to establish a green economy and, and working towards that. I think there's just so much out there that we can do if we have that emphasis. And it's nice to see that um, there is so much funding right now in, in the stimulus package and other places to help uh, create jobs. And I would just uh, encourage what we can do, you know, as a county and, and with the association to look at trying to get as m much of our uh, businesses able to receive those kind of funding to start those kind of businesses. And then they're, they're good for our county, too, just because um, they're... They're green in the sense that they're non-polluting and they're, they're positive. They help to get cars off the roads. They help to energize our homes in a, a non-polluting way. So it's just a really good win-win. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we will really become very proactive in trying to get those kind of green jobs and creating our own green jobs here. Mm -hmm. Let me comment, uh, sure. Madam Chair. Um, City of Thousand Oaks has a, a council appointed business roundtable. We meet monthly, and I'm staffed to it. Uh, we're considering right now the green standards that are being handed down by the state. There, there are state building standards that will be coming down by the summer, details of which are now being worked out. So all the cities are going to have to comply. Um, Thousand Oaks was rated 56 most green, greenest city in the nation, which we think is remarkable. We've really taken this very seriously. And I imagine in our business roundtable, we will be discussing these issues in the next year. How can we meet those standards and perhaps even exceed them because we recognize the, the value of building and living green? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Other comments? Okay, Chief Chief Credit Officer Summers. Yes, thank you. I, <laughs> Supervisor Parks uh, triggered a thought. It's we're very early, but uh, the city uh, in Ventura, the city has convened a task force involving the Economic Development Collaborative through Bruce Stensley, our Small Business Development Center, Ventura College, myself, and former Mayor Brian Brennan to look at the uh, task forces uh, charged with looking at how we can create training and centers for green jobs, bring some of the career development and training, training. funds to training. Ventura County and how we can synergize through our partnerships to develop them. So keep those thoughts coming and keep that support coming, please. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Well, and training is so very important for the workforce and the future workforce. So, Mr. Stensley, any closing comments? And 
Thank you. No, thanks again so much for the invitation and all the support the board provides and the leadership it provides for a regional okay. economic development strategy. Thank you. Okay. And again, board members, anything else? Just uh, certainly, again, I appreciate you coming in uh, and bringing in all the information um, as we participate in the, in the uh, collaborative. Um, I, I see this as, as our economic development arm, and we should continue to, to utilize it both uh, at board meetings but out in our communities and call on the resources and the, te and the skills and the programs that uh, have been adopted by the board and being implemented by our small but mighty staff at the collaborative. So I appreciate it. Thank you for being here this morning so much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. We need a motion to receive and file that report. Motion to receive and file. And a second. There's a motion and a second, and we'll vote on that motion. Seems like so much that we can do. Um, we can also analyze how many green jobs that this will create. You know, just think about increasing bus service. There's more people that need to drive that bus, yes, for example. All you know, connected. There's so many different things we right. do that can create jobs. Okay, and that completes our agenda for the day. Thank, thank you, you so much, and we're adjourned. Thank you, thank, thank you. you.